Due to the severity of this historic drought, the city has been working tirelessly to promote conservation among all its water customers and has maximized the use of recycled water to irrigate parks, schools, and golf courses. But in spite of a tremendous conservation response by the public, future supply still falls short of demand. In response, the city council has taken steps to supplement our water supply by restarting the desalination plant. Desal, bringing it back online, will help diversify our supplies. And it's important to have multiple supplies because you never know when one supply may run out, which is what we're facing with Kachuma, uh, or there may be some restrictions on uh, such as state water where we have adequate water, we bought adequate water, but we can't all get it here all at the same time when our community needs it. And so Desal serves an important role in that. And looking ahead to this next year, it's going to be very critical. Uh, Desal will make up about 30% of our supply uh, with another 30% coming from groundwater, another 30% from our imported water through the state water system, and then the last 10% from recycled water. Uh, so that kind of is our makeup, and that is with our community conserving at least 35%. Thanks to infrastructure left over from the original 1992 plant, the reactivation is much farther along, and the construction costs are less than they would have been without it. It was really essential to have the facility that we had. It was, uh, it's put us so much further ahead. We did get the permits to operate our, our desalination plant back in 1996. We got the permanent permits. And we have, you know, the major infrastructure going out into the ocean, the intake areas is all developed where, where that's going to go, the property to put this on, uh, a lot of the, the major electrical infrastructure has kind of already been established. The infrastructure that allows us to discharge the brine water is kind of already in play. Well, so far we've finished the underground piping and the electrical underground. Uh, very big milestones, lots of equipment underground. Um, we've also received the reverse osmosis skids. Um, they came in several pieces. They've been set at the plant and now we're connecting them together. So that's the main processing unit. So that's a huge milestone for us that they're actually on site. Construction of the desal plant started in August 2015. The facility is expected to be operational for testing purposes by November 2016. The testing phase is expected to take about two months before water is supplied to the distribution system in January 2017. The facility was originally anticipated to supply water to the distribution system starting in October 2016 but has encountered delays due to contaminated soils on site and replacement of electrical transmission pieces from the old 1990s facility. We basically had two large challenges on the project. The first was contaminated soils. We hadn't expected to find contaminated soils at the site. When we started digging for some of the foundations and the underground work, we did find it. Um, we needed to do a notification to the public before we could start removing any of the contaminated soils. And that delayed us about a month while we did that notification before we could start digging. The second thing that we've run into more recently is the way the electrical that's used to power the pumps in the ocean. Um, we've discovered a few things that are slightly different than what we had expected. Um, the way they were designed, um, it's been very difficult for us to get those cables out of their conduit and put them back in again because of some transitions that they do as they go out to the ocean. I think the thing to remember also is when we built the plant the first time around, they did it in eight months. You know, they were you know, in the same situation that we're in right now with a severe drought and they were working very quickly to get the plant online. And so some of the things that were put in then just don't work as well for us now. The facility will use state-of-the-art technology and design practices to reduce electrical demand and environmental impacts. Thanks to improvements in technology, the plant will use 40% less energy than the original plant by using high-efficiency pumps, motors, and improved filter technology. With surface water supplies critically low due to five years of low rainfall, the desal plant reactivation will be a vital piece in helping the city meet its water needs. We're bringing the facility online at, at just over 3,000 acre feet, which is going to be a, approximately 30 percent of our water supply. And so we hope that that's sufficient to, to get us through this drought cycle. We feel that's a, a, an adequate size for now. but. Um, 
you know, that the potential for DSAL to help out regionally with our water supply needs is, is really important. The desalination facility is an important part of the city's water supply portfolio, which also includes surface water from Kachuma and Gibraltar reservoirs, groundwater, state water, purchased water, recycled water, and conservation. When the desalination facility comes online, extraordinary water conservation from the community will remain critical to meeting water demands during the drought. Even with desal, conservation is more critical than ever. It is key to being able to balance our supply mix. Uh, we cannot meet the demands of this community right now. We're going to need the community's conservation in order to make ends meet, and uh, we will not be taking our foot off the pedal when it comes to conservation. As a whole, as a community, consistently meeting that 35% conservation target has been essential to allowing us to now enter the sixth year uh, of this drought, which is unprecedented.